that they used to play a men's tour tournament on the Indianapolis Speedway golf course, and at least one, and one of the days was when the race cars were running. One time Bob Charles had a six-foot putt. A guy hit the wall. Ooh. Charles put the six-foot putt 12 feet past and said, what was that? <laughs> he said it in New Zealand, of course, New Zealandese. Should break a little right to left. Uh... Good yeah. start there. Good, yeah. oh. Good forward. That was an important putt for Jane, too. She's so close to the lead, and she couldn't afford to drop a stroke so late in the tournament. Well, that keeps her there at uh, four off the lead at plus six. Now to the 14th hole, and Sally Little, who is certainly one of the hottest golf course uh, golfers on the course today. On the 14th hole, Sally Little of South Africa. Much has been expected of her. She's played extremely well, but she's not won these big ones yet. She's starting to come around. On her game there. Good good swing she has. 14th is a par four hole, and you get some funny lies on that second shot, and that's a funny shot in the bunker there, as you see, short of the green. Did she have a tough... Well, I was going to ask Rosberg. I think he's everywhere. Well, <laughs> All right, Marlene Bauer-Hagee has gotten this close now with her chip shot on the 16th, so she's got a chance at her par on the par three hole. Plus 12 for the tournament. Moved up into good shape. Dot Germain has already made a bogey four on this whole wide putting stance. Mm -hmm. Wide of the hole, too. So that'll be a four. And a bogey for Marlene Bauer Hagee. He said that she started when she was very young, but it's hard to realize she's been out here a long time now. Sure has. Played a lot of great golf, too. So they stand at the moment in the U.S. Women's Open Golf Championship. Carter by one over Stacy by four over Jane Blaylock. We'll be back for more of our live coverage here. The USGA exists only to serve golf. Its program includes 10 national championships, five for men, five for women. The most recent addition to the USGA schedule is the Women's Amateur Public Links Championship. Earlier this month, it was played for the second time and won for the second time by 20-year-old Kelly Fuchs of Phoenix, another national champion. The preceding announcement was furnished by the United States Golf Association. And Peter Alice here looking down at Joanne Connor's second shot to the seventh hole, as you saw from the rough, and she's bouncing away rough again short of the green on this par four, which is just under 400 yards in length. Looks to be sitting up pretty well. Karna, the leader by just a single stroke over Hollis Stacy. There's the flag. You can see pretty well to the back of the green. We've had two rain delays today. We should have started uh, showing you the golf from about the 12th or 13th hole, but due to these two rather long rain delays, the first one was about an hour and three quarters, the second one 30 minutes or so, our intrepid men are out there with their magic lanterns and they're carrying them around the course on electric carts and so on and they're doing, well, I think a fabulous job, hope you agree. This is, was Hollis Stacey's second shot, just a moment uh, before Joanne Connors. This is on tape. Stacey, ooh, 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 ooh. You can see, well, they're almost, in fact, side by side short left of this seventh green. That's how they stand. Jane Blaylock just hold a very good putt for her par on uh, this hole and uh, very much in contention. Sally Little playing superb golf today out in 33 and she's had two birdies in uh, the opening four holes on the inward nine. Sally Little, there she is. Tall, pretty girl, born in South Africa, now lives over here in the United States. She was in the bunker for two, came out and has this to remain eight over par. 14th, 393 yards, par four, of course. And you can see all she's got to do, about 10 feet. this for her par four. Sally has a reputation as being a very good putter indeed. And that 
that's how she got that reputation. Beautiful putt. And after a slightly wayward second shot, she's out of the bunker and down with a good putt. And remains eight over par, four under par for today. An excellent score. And we'll go back to the seventh. That ball on the green, Joanne Carner's chip up. And not too bad, but by no means uh, dead. And uh, Stacy, Hollis Stacy, you can see with a very lofted club, looks to have an awkward stance. Bob Rosberg's there. Bob, can you uh, say, tell us what it's lying like? Looks awkward. Well, yes, it is. The ball's above her. And she's played a good looking shot, though. Beautiful shot. Uh, superb shot. Uh, that's the sort of thing that uh, wins championships. That was beautifully played. As Bob Rosberg told you, the ball well above her feet. Played it just with her hands and arms, and up go the umbrellas. And uh, Hollis there, just one stroke behind Joanne Carner. And uh, just a few moments ago, we taped Joanne's pitch. You can see again, a very lofted club standing well away from the ball. We get a pretty good firm swing. Up she goes. Pulled it up very quickly. It's a little bit to the left. She pulled it round a bit, but it stopped a little bit too early for her. And she's got a battle here to save her par. Best round so far, Pat Bradley's in with a 70. Very good score, but 13 over par, but an excellent uh, score from a very good player, Pat Bradley. And of course, Sally Little we spoke about earlier out in 33. Sandra Post was out in 34. She's had a couple of birdies coming home, so started the day at 12 under. She's down to nine under. So lots of good stuff being played here today under difficult conditions. But this is Joanne Carner. Longish putt for her par four. And just too hard. She was after it. She thought that was right in. Just the pace. It just hit right of centre. And well, you saw it horseshoe round. And that's a stroke dropped. She must have felt that that was right in the back. But it didn't disappear. And young Hollis has this putt to draw level. As with the, uh, the rain and the earlier players, a lot of the greens may start to become a little marked with footprints, spike marks, and so on. Well done. Very good chip and a good putt, and a par four, and a tied lead, Stacy and Carner. Up to the 14th now, 393 yard par four. Jan Stevenson, Alexandria Reinhardt. Reinhardt pitching up. What a nice shot. Beautiful shot. That's her third shot. Very, very well played indeed. And there you see the rain coming down. Well, that's uh, quite playable in. But of course, when the thunder and the lightning rolls about, then the dreaded siren, the clarion will call and uh, everyone runs for shelter. But as long as there's no lightning, this certainly won't stop play. Jan Stevenson, very attractive Australian girl. Grimaces, and that's why. Stevenson started the day at 11 over. Uh, so although she's had a couple of birdies in the, uh, the first four holes on the inward nine, she is 13 over, two over par for today, out in 39. Alexandria Reinhardt out in 38. She was 11 over starting the day, now 14 over.
course in excellent condition. Green's firm, pretty quick, but very smooth. Jan Stevenson for her par four, 14th hole. Well struck. Get in there. Moved away, moved right across the face of the hole. So she drops a stroke. Fourteen over par. Reinhardt, this for her par four. Safely hold. Good pitch and a putt. Faithful caddies keeping their, trying to keep their players dry. Now there's the 15th hole, uh, you can see 315 yards of par 4, slightly dog-legging from right to left, and here's Sally Little, with her second shot, Sally, who's putting together a beautiful round of golf today. And another splendid shot. Splendid shot from Sally Little. Out in 33, starts home, birdie, par, birdie, par, par. She's four under today. And playing with her, another exciting young player, Amy Alcott, who was out in 36. Started the day at 12 over, Amy. Out in 36, par out 35. So she was one over going out. But birdies 10, 11, pars the 12th. Birdies the 13th, but dropped a stroke at the last hole, the uh, 14th, longish par four. Took five and is now 11 over. So, one under for the day, Amy Olcott. Very attacking player. She's 22 years old. Good shot, perfect length, but just a little bit left of the flag. And two excellent second shots on this uh, 15th hole. Let's have a word from uh, Bob Rosberg, who's with Joanne Carner and Hollis Stacy in trouble with here. Yes, Joanne has hit a big hook off the tee and is in the trees, but actually she got a pretty good break. Uh, she's going to have to hit a lofted club to get it out, but she does have an opening and she should be able to get it within... Oh, 160, 170 yards from the green on this par five. Stacy's driven perfectly right down the middle. Well, of course, Joanne, not renowned for her consistency with um, just hitting the ball straight down the fairway. That's why she adds excitement to the game. Rather like Arnold Palmer has for so many years. Occasionally they wander from the straight and narrow and then sometimes pull off miracle shots and sometimes make disastrous disastrous shots that we are all capable of doing. This is though Sally Little on the left and a couple of spectators just wondering well, perhaps we should have stayed home mum after all. It's wet out here but our favourites will be around in a moment. And there you get some idea of the steady downpour but Thank goodness, no rumbles of thunder and lightning. Of course, when that happens, you'll hear the siren and play will stop. We've already had two rain delays, but the youngsters seem happy enough. We've had two rain delays, and this is all, or most of it is extra coverage from our intrepid cameraman. Let's have another word from Bob Rosberg. Well, Joanne tried to hit it up over the trees, did not quite get it up high enough. It caught a big tree, jumped all the way across the fairway and into the trees on the right-hand side. She's still about 250 yards, and she's going to have to play out safe. She really can't even take a shot at it. Well, obviously, Joanne gambling there. We'll have to wait and see whether that gamble 
or that one bad tee shot and then a rash gamble may well cost her dear at the end of this day as she's tied for the lead with Holly Stacey but this is Amy Alcott going for a birdie three at the 15th well, that really slid away to the right a four for Amy. She remains uh, one under for the for the day and 11 over for the tournament. Sally Little replacing her ball and the rain gremlins are affecting our equipment out on the course. It's, uh, all our technicians are being tested to the full today. But still we hope you're enjoying the pictures from this very fine golf course Country Club of Indianapolis one of the world's fine championships the women's open golf championship of the united states sally little for a birdie three little who really has played splendidly today out in 33 this for her third birdie on the back nine What a beautiful stroke, firmly into the back of the hole, and Sally Little is really galloping round this course in splendid style. Five under par for the day. All right, Peter, here we are having a look at tomorrow night's Monday Night Baseball, one of Peter's favorite sports, I think we <laughs> pointed that out before. Tomorrow night, Yankees against Kansas City, Boston against Minnesota, or Chicago Cubs against Los Angeles. Check your local listings for the time and the game in your area. That is tomorrow night. Little word about Sally Little. The uh, record, I believe, is 67, isn't it, in the U.S. Open? That's right. Wim women's? That's right. Uh, three people have had that, and we don't have our <laughs> notebook right here. Judy Bell was one, and Margie Masters from Australia was another, and the left-handed... Swinging Bonnie, Bonnie Bryant. Powell. Right. Bonnie right. Bryant was the third one. They've all had 67, and we're discussing that because, of course, Sally Little has a shot at that. Sally now five under. And on we're today's in round. for 66. 66 would do it for her. Now, here we are with uh, Sandra Post getting her third shot, about to, on 14. She's plus nine for the tournament, so. Let's see, she must be making a little comeback today. What did Sandra Post start the day at? She started the day at plus 13. My goodness, she's four under. Huh? Some good playing today. It just keep it in the fairway and uh, soft greens. You, you are able to score a little better, even though it's raining a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'd much rather have the rain and the wind they had yesterday when it's gusting, and that'll drive everyone's score up. The heat has bothered Sandra a lot, too, in this tournament, but it looks like she's starting well because she started 200 par on the front nine the first day and finishing well. Sandra, a Canadian, one of the best-liked ladies out there. Playing up very nicely. Great shot. Mm -hmm. Just like Dot Germain's shot there a minute ago. Yep. Like a replay. And she's going to hustle on up to the green there. Try to put that in the hole as quickly and as expeditiously as possible. We're on the 18th green now. Marlene bauer Hagee. This is the finishing par four, only 310 yards long, but it plays a little longer than that because the tee shot goes down in the valley. Se second shot is straight uphill, and that always means, oh, another club or so anyway, doesn't it? It means at least another club yep. going uphill. And of course, it's hard to judge just uh, how hard to hit it, even if you have a wedge in your hand, because I've seen a lot of good shots, and you think you've played a good shot from down there, as Joanne Carter did yesterday and left it in the fringe. But uh, Judy Kimball made a two here the other day in the, in the uh, second round, driving yes, a wedge. You. What's going on out on the golf course, Bob Rosberg? Hollis Stacy has knocked her third shot about 40 feet from the hole at this par five, the eighth hole. Uh, Joanne Carner had to play out from her uh, bad position af after her second shot. She hit it across the fairway in three in the left-hand rough and then played a shot to within about 25 feet of the hole and she'll be putting for a par. Stacy with a 40-footer for a birdie. Okay, Joanne Carner hanging in there very well after major problems on that par five hole. 
Marlene Bauer Hagee with the recognizable stance. Making it work for her on the final hole. Okay, a good finish for her in the 1978 U.S. Women's Open. At plus 13, she had an even par round today of 71. Back out on the 14th hole now. Sandra Post for a birdie. Rhonda, have you heard she's been bothered a little bit by uh, strained ligaments in her hand or something? A friend of hers told me this week that's why uh, she got off to a good start and then hurt her hand again hitting out of the rough or something. Well, she hurt her hand very badly just before the Colgate Dinosaur, which she won uh -huh. uh, in spite of the injury. She was trying to swing very easily in that particular tournament, and uh, that seemed to help her game that week. Since then, it's been troubling her off and on throughout the year. Well, that was her third shot on this hole. This is for a par. We also get where she started at plus 12, not plus 13. She's three under for the day, if, if. Mm. Now she's two under for the day, and at plus 10 for the tournament. Just didn't hit that hard enough. Sandra's a fine player, and she wins a lot of money on the tour, and uh, is starting to, I hope, get the winning charge. Uh, picking up that major victory this year was important. Okay, now back out on the golf course, getting a picture out of our camera. Hollis Stacy putting for what, Bob Rossberg? Par? Stacy for a birdie. This has got to be a putt for a birdie. Yep, that was that long putt that Bob mentioned earlier that she would have. That was for a birdie, so that should be for the par five that would keep Hollis Stacy at three over for the championship. Great putt. Put up that close and go ahead and finish it out. It puts a little pressure on Joanne, who has her putt there, which is, doesn't look as though it's on the green, just in the short fringe. Has that putt to uh, stay tied. She misses. She drops the shot back. Right. Stacy could regain the lead here if Carner misses this putt. Hollis going about her business, just walking off, getting under an umbrella. She's done with that green. It's really a good par five there. You, it's an absolute must that you drive it straight. If you can just see just past Joanne's ball, there's a creek. You drive it in the rough a couple of times there, it's uh, really a hard shot going across that uh, little creek they have. Very shortly, we'll be going past our original allotted time, but we're going to stay on once again and try to conclude this golf championship today. There's the way they stand, the tie for the lead, Connor and Stacy, three ahead of Blaylock, four ahead of Sally Little, who's having the hot round today, six ahead of Kathy Martin and Donna Capone Young. Nancy Lopez, if you're wondering, is another shot further back at plus 10 even on today's round. Now, obviously, she's just off the green because uh, Joanne's left the flag in, which you are entitled to do, to leave it in or, or have it tended, either one. Well, it's going to be, it appears, a bogey six for Joanne Connor. It certainly will not be a par five, so she'll drop out of the lead. And not a bad uh, six with all the trouble she had, Jim. No. Uh, there it is. Looked a lot more like a seven when she was in the woods back there. Well, it did, and uh, it just shows you the importance of driving well. You, you've got to keep the ball in the fairway. If you do happen to miss one, you, you've got to miss it at the right time. Okay, then Hollis Stacy has regained the lead in the 1978 U.S. Women's Open. She won it last year. She's leading again. Here is Sally Little with yet another birdie attempt on the 16th green. This is the par three hole with the tree guarding the right-hand side of the green. She has a long putt for this birdie attempt. Sally, who is five under on today's round. Can you imagine pars in for a 66? They were calling her the female Gary player almost before she'd begun her career. Well, being from South Africa, yes. A little prettier than Gary, though. <laughs> May not play quite as well, but... About the same size. <laughs> Uh, what is the temperament of, of Sally Little? Is she pretty well poised and would not be bothered by all the kind of carryings on we have here today? Well, I don't think the weather or any of uh, these outside factors would influence Sally's temperament today. Sometimes she gets a little hot at herself, though, as all golfers do, and uh, has to battle that occasionally. But uh, she has a, a fairly even temperament on the golf course. Well, she has no reason to get angry with herself today. Being Certainly not. five under par as she is. Boy, five under par on this golf course is some performance for anybody, well, whatever it, the length of the course, too. 
Now, what they're doing, Jim, you see Amy Alcott uh, pacing off there, uh, is there's probably some casual water now. We're getting a pretty steady rain. Now, you are allowed uh, relief from that. You do not have to put through that. So she is stepping off, trying to find as dry an area as she can uh, to put through to the hole. Okay, in other words, you take it to the nearest point, equidistant from the hole as you are while avoiding going through the casual water, is that it? Well, I'm not too sure or about just that. Not I'd like near. To ask, uh, we've got our man Frank Hannigan. Yeah, but he doesn't here. have his microphone on. He's oh. been on the radio talking to the USJ. <laughs> Frank, speaking about Frank Hannigan of the United States Golf Association, assistant director, who is here to inform us on such matters. So, uh, what is the story on that, Frank? You can tell me, and I'll tell them. She has to go to the nearest place place where there's no casual water, not near the hole, is that it? It doesn't have to be exactly equidistant from the hole. Nor does it have to be on the green. Uh, okay. Now. Okay, 16th hole, you see what's been happening there. Let's go to Bill Fleming out on the golf course. What do you have for us, Bill? Well, you recall earlier that Jane Blaylock was playing a very consistent round, had not had a bogey here today. She came to the eighth hole and hooked her drive into the rough, but salvaged par. But here at number nine, she again hit her second shot uh, to the left side, and it looks like she's going to take the first bogey of the day for her. So she would go to plus seven at this point. Which would put her in a tie with this young woman, Sally Little, for third place in the tournament. Sally Little quickly moving up that leaderboard. Sandra Post now. Sandra Post also having a fine round today. She's two under par on the 18th. She's plus 10 for the tournament. And on the leaderboard. Another good shot for her. Sandra Post of Canada playing up. Let's take a five second pause right now for station identification along the line, but we're coming back, fellas. We return to the 1978 U.S. Women's Open at the Country Club of Indianapolis. Hollis Stacy leading. She led when the day began, lost the lead to Joanne Carner, now has regained it. She's at plus three, one stroke ahead of Carner. Jane Blaylock at plus six, but looking probably to go to plus seven, according to Bill Fleming, our man on the golf course with that group. Sally Little at plus seven. Pretty soon we'll be putting on the 16th hole, a long putt for a birdie. And uh, Kathy Martin is at plus nine. She's played very steadily today. Donna Capone Young at nine has been slipping. Pam Higgins there, Joanne Washam. Nancy Lopez, who had hoped to crown off uh, the greatest rookie year in the history of golf by winning this championship, is at plus 10 now. Remember, she broke all the rookie records. She won seven tournaments in a rookie year, five of them in a row. Even broke Jerry Pate's male rookie record for earnings, over $135,000. But here's Sally Little now for a birdie that could put her in sensational position, but now it's going to be much tougher for a par. I guess that's extremely wet there, huh? Well, it must be. She's a little downhill there, and uh, again, you're playing under a little bit different conditions as, uh, with the, as far as the putting is concerned, and you don't want to, of course, just take a run at it, knock it six or seven feet by, but the one she left herself is not one I'd like. I never did like downhill putts, Rhonda. Now maybe she's a little angry at herself. You said she she looked like it yeah. after that particular putt. She wanted to get that up to the hole at all costs because this late in the round, uh, as far behind as she is, she needs every birdie that she can get. Amy Alcott is another one we definitely expect to see winning major championships in her career. Very young. Of course, she already did win the USGA Girls Junior Championship back a few years. She's also got a very good attitude about golf. Pretty good putt, considering the circumstances of the green. If you've just joined us, we've had two thunderstorms in Indianapolis. Play has been delayed considerably by those two storms. Everything slowed down. We're going to stay with it to conclusion, however. We were supposed to have left the air if things had finished normally a couple of minutes ago, but we're going to stay right with it here. Now Sally Little with a tough attempt for a par. Well, you never can tell how important this putt really is because if Hollis, Stacy, and Joanne Carner do run into some trouble on the back nine, Sally could be right up there very near the lead. That's right. 
On the right, we have Sandra Post on the 15th hole. That's a birdie attempt on the right. The par for Sally Little on the left. And that one's good. A real big, important putt, keeping her five under for the day. Sandra Post missing that one, but uh, should make that one for a par to remain a two under for the day, 10, under, 10 over for the championship. Again, Stacy leads by one over Connor, by four now over Blaylock and Little. Bob Rosberg is out with the leaders on the ninth hole. What's going on there, Bob? Well, both drove in the right hand rough, Jim, and Stacy just could not get the club on the ball. She tried to hit an iron and left it about, oh, 50 or 60 yards short of the green. And Connor took a wood, I believe a five wood, and hit a great shot out. I can't tell exactly how close it is, but it looks to be 15 or 20 feet from the hole. So it looks like we could have a tie at the end of nine with the last nine yet to be played. I guess ebbing and flowing is the appropriate phrase here. That ninth hole, by the way, is a 391-yard par four. When they finish that, of course, they'll make the turn and head for home, and that could be a long and exciting nine holes. Difference between them, one, as the one when the day began, but again, remember at one point, Connor not only caught Stacy with three birdies in a row, but passed her. And they drop back into a tie, and now Stacy has regained the lead. But, as you heard Bob report, it could change again on the ninth hole. Jim, it seems almost like match play, and both of these girls, Joanne Carner and Hollis Stacy, are real experts at that particular way of playing golf. But it's match play with somebody looking over your shoulder, because we still have <laughs> Jane Blaylock and Sally Little within striking distance. At the moment, those appear to be the only ones, with everybody else at least plus nine. Well, look who's here. Nancy Lopez out on the 13th hole. Nancy, as we said, really wanted to win this one to cap off the greatest rookie year in the history of golf, but it is not to be. She's seven shots off the lead now and not making her move. Were she making a move climbing up the leaderboard, there would be hope. As you see, she's in a bunker on the 13th hole, a 188-yard par three. A little sand to get across there, too. Shot, huh? That was well played. I was uh, interested in watching. She looked like she almost hit a chip there, not so much of the regular way that you see a sand shot play. Every so often, and special people come along in sports who are great athletes, but also have an extra rapport. Oh, it might be an Olga Corbett or, or a Steve Cawthon. And it certainly is Nancy Lopez. Let's meet her up close and personal. As a father, like any other father, worrying about the daughters going around playing from one city to the other city. I really worry about my daughter. But the way she is, she call me every other day. And I think she worry about me too. I don't get home to Roswell very much because of the uh, ladies tour. And when I do come home, I come around Albuquerque to visit with my father and to visit the zoo and, and relax from the tour. Here you go. <laughs> Ever since I started playing golf, my mother and my father sacrificed many things for me. My father would work hard and he would save money year after year to send me on the amateur circuit. He's contributed, I think, mostly to my game mentally because I think he's a strong person mentally, he's confident and he has a lot of confidence in me. Uh, I remember when he used to tell my mother, well, I don't want Nancy to wash the dishes. She says, those hands are for golf, and if her calluses get soft, then she's not going to be able to hold on to the golf club. My mother gave up a lot of luxuries she could have had. I remember when my mother used to take me back and forth to the golf course every day, and she sacrificed a house to buy me a new car so I could drive myself back and forth to the golf course. Now that I'm professional, I wanted to buy her a new house with the money I made on the tour. I promised her when I turned professional that I would repay her in that way. And she died last September. Now I'm not able to buy her that house that I wanted to buy her so badly. Since I've joined the tour, it's, it's been a different life for me. But I've enjoyed it very much. I've been traveling all over the world, meeting different people. And I'm having just a great time. <laughs>
Getting to know Nancy Lopez, and here she is with a par putt on the 13th hole. Remember, she's 10 over for the tournament, even on today's round. Has not been able to mount a charge on this final day. Looked as though it was about a four-footer jam. Should be fairly mm -hmm. straight. Good putt. So Nancy puts that one down on the 13th, remain even par for the day. 10 over. And she still manages the small smile. Yeah, she is really delightful to watch. Uh, you know that she was just um, devastated yesterday by that 79, and yet she just handled herself so well. She was tied for the lead when that third round began, but dropped way back with yesterday's 79. Going to the 17th hole, 393-yard par four. How would you describe it in addition to that? Well, you've, you've got to try to keep your drive to the left, and of course with the flag in the front right of the green today, you have that trap to contend with on the right. Uh, now, the Sally here has driven, it looks as though she's in the right side of the fairway with her feet a little above the ball. It helps make the ball go to the right. So now if she's thinking well, aim at the middle of the green and let nature take its course. Remember, again, this young woman from South Africa who has gone into the sand is five under on today's round. Headed for a possible 66, but she'll have to get out of that sand onto the green and into the hole in two. She's going to stay there. Amy Alcott, her fellow competitor, playing along. Hitting her second shot. Plus 11 for the tournament is Amy. It looks as though she's in a tall rough, Jim. She's on the uh, left side of the fairway, which is where you want to be. Or, or she's uh, six or seven yards too much to the left. So much will depend on her line if she could get the club on the ball. You hear her say go, so she knew right away that it just wasn't caught quite good enough. Carbon copy of Sally Littles. She get a little read here on this trap shot. And now, Joanne Carter has in fact retaken the lead. A double bogey by Hollis Stacy at the ninth hole. Okay, so Carter is one stroke in head. Uh, one stroke ahead, it goes back and forth. It's going to be some battle down the home stretch. They are also a little bit closer to Jane Blaylock and Sally Little, remember. Sandra Post tee shot on 16, par three hole with the big tree guarding the right side. That should be far enough left, I believe. Yes, looks like it's hooking right in there. Good shot. Yep. Real good shot. Almost hole high. On the 14th tee is Nancy Lopez. Still at even par for the day. Remember, you saw her make par, and you can hear the raindrops in our microphones. That looked pretty good. Great rhythm when she swings, and this, this is a hole that measures 393. It's slightly uphill, so it plays a little longer. You notice that ball didn't do too much running there. Yeah. You also could see the ripples on that fairway. It's almost impossible to get a good lie for your second shot out there. Remind, some of these fairways remind you a little bit of St. Andrews, the way you just don't get level lies. How does this course compare to most of the courses, Rhonda, that they play week after week on the women's tour? Well, it's much tighter uh, than most of the courses. For instance, uh, Joanne Carner, who won the tournament last week in Columbus, was able to drive into the adjoining fairway on the last hole, still make a par, uh -huh. and win the tournament. Mm -hmm. And so USGA courses are noted for being much tighter. And that was Donna Horton White hitting her second shot. Donna, who was very much a contender and who has dropped back along with Nancy. We're going to take a break as they stand like that and then return. Uh, Peter Alice looking down at Sally Little's third shot, 17th hole. And if she can get down in two and maybe get a birdie at the last hole, she would set a score that uh, may take some catching. Bit strong. Just a little bit strong. Little seven over. The leader, Joanne Carner, four over. So only three strokes in it, and Joanne has nine holes to play. Sally just this green and the 18th. So all sorts of things can happen, and Jane Blaylock, of course, seven over. She's still got the uh, second nine holes to play. With Amy Olcott and Sally Little. Rain seems to be easing a little bit. And 
both these girls were in the uh, bunker in front of the green for two leaving themselves not the easiest of bunker shots they were fairly well back in the bunker and as you can see both players have gone past the hole both putting for pass watery sun appears authority that one so it's a five for Amy Olcott yeah. who goes yeah. to 12 over level par for the day just taking extra care not to stand on Sally's line and decides well it's not worth taking any silly risks and she just marks and we'll go and have a look at uh, Nancy Lopez at the 14th Nancy, who really has set ladies' golf alight over the past few months. Go, Get up. Go! And just a misjudgment in club. Right on line, you can see a club short. Back, Sally Little's putt for her par at the 17th. That's another beautiful putt. And Rhonda, that really might well set the cat among the pigeons, might it, if she could possibly get a three at the 18th. It certainly might. Look at the tough holes that Carner and Stacy have yet to play. This girl, Sally Little, really has holes and splendid putts, and the ball has run into the hole at such a good pace, such a confident speed. And uh, she really has put some good shots and some rather magical putts together. Uh, Sandra Post. This is for her par at the 16th. And that's safely in for her. So she remains at 10 over. Still up on the leaderboard. And that is the leaderboard. You can see what a good position Sally Little is in. Having played 17 holes. And should she certainly get nothing worse than a par at the 18th she will be in the clubhouse finished at seven over and that may well be a very good total that's from our high camera position way up above and be behind the 18th tee that's the tee Sally Little and Amy Olcott on it and they're faced with a drive onto a fairway which slopes quite considerably from left to right a lot of the players have hit irons from this tee, as Dave Maher told you earlier, to get to the flat part of the fairway at the bottom there, not too far over that little road that runs just at the beginning of the fairway. A lot of them have been playing their seconds for some, from some 30 yards past that. Others have gone with a wood further up, but uh, of course the fairway gets narrower. That's looking back from behind the green, and you can see the flag pretty near the front of the green. Big bunker right across the front. So it's just a question of, as to how these players, these individual players, see the shot. Sally's out with a wood. Trees on the left. Fairway sloping left to right. A very good driving hole. Well, she's been very consistent up to now. And if she gets a four here, those, those figures will read 75, 75, 75, 66. And that's a fine shot. And there you see it just squelched down in the middle of the fairway. Uh, Nancy Lopez, third shot. A little pitch and run, 
third to the 14th. Well struck second, just misjudged, just a, a shot, a club too few. It's a nice little chip if it runs and keeps up. It ran all right, but the slope just took it away. And there's the famous Ansel with the laughing face. Very good little chip. Let's hear from Bob Rosberg, who's with the leaders on the 10th. Both of them put their second shots right in front of the green at this par five, and Joanne has just played a pitch that she didn't like very much. She pitched it about 18 feet by. Hollis has a very easy little chip because the pin is in sort of a hollow. She should be able to pitch the ball real close here, if not hold it. Well, we're unable to bring you those pictures with our uh, handheld cameras because of uh, problems with the rain. A little water in the works. But Bob Rosberg there and uh, Bill Fleming are out on the course following the play of the leaders. But this is Nancy Lopez for her par four at the 14th. the par for Nancy who had that disastrous 79 yesterday but she's not a machine got to have some bad shots and some bad rounds and some bad luck occasionally Donna White this is for a par to have a very good future ahead. This young girl nips it in. <laughs> On she goes. One over for the day. And Eleven over for the tournament. Or the championship. All right, here we are back at the 18th hole with Sally Little. If she pars this hole, she will have recorded the lowest round ever turned in in the USGA Women's Open Golf Championship, a round of 66 that would keep her at plus seven for the tournament and within shot of winning this tournament. Remember, as we've said, the leaders have a long way to go, and they have been staggering the last couple of holes. This is the 310-yard par four with the second shot straight up the hill over a bunker. And uh, she couldn't be in a better spot, could she, Dave? No, and... Uh She's getting a drop there, Jim. There's an area there that is ground under repair. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you can see the white line. Uh, looking around for where it would be the best place to drop it there. Uh, Frank, why would she go the other side? It, that rule has changed a little, hasn't it? About uh, dropping out of ground under repair? He's talking to Frank what? Hannigan, and when we open Frank's microphone, we'll hear his reply. Frank? Yeah, she could measure through ground under repair, but she's limited only to one particular point as her kickoff or reference point. She's got to drop it within two club lengths of the nearest point that avoids intervention. Frank Hannigan, the assistant director of the United States Golf Association, very kindly sitting with, with us for that sort of information. Anything else we might need, particularly in the way of rulings. Uh, Bob Rosberg, what's happening with Stacy and Connor? Well, Carner two putted from 18 feet for five, and Stacy rimmed the hole for an eagle and tapped it in for four, and it's all even. All even again. My goodness. It's going to really be exciting. What about Jane Blaylock here with that group, uh, Bill Fleming? Well, on the 11th hole, just ahead of the leaders, Jane Blaylock has hit her second shot within about six inches of being out of bounds. Uh, she does, however, have a, a fair shot, and... Uh, Oddly enough, her stance will be out of bounds, but the ball is inbound, so it was a very, very close encounter for her. All right, those are sound reports from the golf course. Trouble with our handheld camera that's trying to follow the leaders out there, all of this being improvised because of the two rain delays we've had. Our coverage had been planned to start at 13. We have been able to show you at least a few shots of the leaders on the front nine. Sally Little now. Let's follow this story on in on the 18th hole. Gets up, she's hit a good shot. That's indeed a shot. Well, I tell you, she didn't just play safely for the center of the green. She was gone for it, and it was a, a very questionable 
shot for distance, huh? Well, I'm sure she she realizes, as we do, that if she could get one more birdie there, uh, you know, she still has a fighting chance. Up until this year, 67 was the lowest uh, round of her lifetime. However, this year she had a 65 in the Catherine Crosby. And that, too, was in the final round. She comes on strong at the end, it seems. She's kind of known for a hot round occasionally, isn't she? Yes, you can't call Sally a streaky player. She's too consistent for that, but she can really turn it on. Amy Alcott with a live falling away from her. They're kind of tough, aren't they, Dave? Oh, this could be a tough shot. So much, again, depends on the line. It sounded as though she got a lot of club on that ball, and she did hit a marvelous shot there. Good shot by Amy Alcott. But her fellow competitor of the day, Sally Little, is the focus of the attention here at the 18th. Two things, remember, you know, it's not only that she is in sight now, the lowest round ever recorded in the U.S. Women's Open, it's also that she will now have to sit and wait and see if the leaders are going to come back to her as they play the back nine. Now you see the big scoreboard being used for the first time at the Women's Open. Here's the reception for Sally Little. This was recorded yesterday when the kids on the scoreboard put that up, put their own version of a banner, ABC, please film me. And so we, do, we didn't film you, we did you on videotape. <laughs> picky, picky, picky. <laughs> but they got on. Okay, you're on. That's enough. <laughs> now we go back to the 17th and Sandra Post in the bunker. Well, that's a lot of large bunkers on this golf course. Sandra's only 10 over par, but, you know, she thought she was going to miss the cut, packed her car, checked out of her motel, then found that the, she had made the cut and had to go back and re-register in her motel and is playing quite well. Well, she's regained her concentration, certainly two under par for the day, but she's going to have that one to remain two under par. That was a tough shot she had there, Jim. A long blast shot uh, off of that uh, hard sand, okay. wet sand, I should say. Back to 18, where Amy Alcott will be putting first for her birdie attempt. Certainly would be nice if Sally Little could end up with a birdie to cap a magnificent round of golf. On this One. golf course, on this day, with the type of weather, it's a fantastic round. I don't imagine there have been too many 66s shot when you've been interrupted by thunderstorms twice. No, uh, especially uh, in these particular tournaments. You're playing for a major championship and you're playing a hard golf course. Uh, 66s have been shot, I'm sure, with a couple of delays on a lot easier golf courses. Well, somewhere, perhaps, Judy Bell, Margie Masters, and Bonnie Bryan are watching with interest because it's their shared record of 67 that Sally Little will be breaking. I believe Judy Bell is here this week as a member of the USGA Women's Committee. Margie Masters, I remember, was playing early in the tournament. Now Amy Alcott. Swings right to left. Where is it? Well, she didn't hit it quite far enough to get that swing, huh? Yeah, not, not that much swing either. It's not a, yeah. a big breaker from just behind the hole. Now it will be the turn of Sally Little. Amy Alcott with an even par round of 71. Good one today. Talking to Amy earlier, she said she just played well all week and just nothing happened. Sandra Post first with this for a par on the 17th hole. It'll be a little bit before Sally Little putts here, so we'll take a look at Sandra. Needing this to remain a two under for the day, 10 over for the tournament. Gave it a chance, but not quite, not quite. So she'll have that for a bogey five that'll drop her to one under for the day. Now Sally Little, 26-year-old professional golfer from South Africa, was inspired, she says, by Gary Player, quite logically, at the age of 12 to take up the game. She was 12, not when Gary was 12. <laughs> and uh, she's just about Gary's size, as we said, 5 feet 8. And this for a birdie that would give her 65. Not much break here. This is the same putt Marlene Hagee had a while ago, which she made for a birdie. Look at that. Wow. 
What a patch. <laughs> My goodness. Oh. And a brand new record. A fantastic round of out of the lead. We have a tie for the lead between Carter and Stacy. They're well out on the golf course. This young woman has shot 65, and before this day is done, she just could be the U.S. Women's Open golf champion. Foreign golfers have won before, notably Faye Crocker of Uruguay and Catherine Lacoste of France. Nancy Lopez got into trouble on the 15th fairway. This was just a few moments ago. Not on the fairway, it's been trouble in the rough behind that tree, as you see, and it's still in the rough there with that shot. Not to be her day, not to be her weekend. It would have been dramatic, it would have been well-earned, but uh, it must be earned. And this, week, this weekend, Nancy couldn't quite do it. She hit her next shot, that one you were watching, remember, was on tape. Hit her next one over the green. So the strokes are mounting up for the young woman from Roswell, New Mexico. Sandra Post missed her little putt on 17 and had a double bogey six there. So Sandra's fine round is falling away from her too. Nancy's gonna have one to think about with that putt too. Bill Fleming is still out on the course with Jane Blaylock and Donna Capone Young. Anything happening in that area, Bill? Well, I reported earlier that Jane Blaylock almost hit her second shot out of bounds. She recovered to make par, which was a par five on the 11th. Donna finally got a, a birdie. So Donna Young is now at plus eight. Okay, that's the report on that group. The leaders, however, are Connor and Stacy. remember, tie at the end of 10 holes. They have such a long way to, to come. It looks like they're going to make it today because the sky is getting a bit brighter all the time. Looks like we'll make it at this point anyway. You never know when those thunderstorms are going to come up. Here's Sally Little recording the record score in the U.S. Women's Open. And look at her check those numbers and check them again and again because if she signs it and by any chance it's wrong one way or the other, she would be disqualified for the tournament. And then you must sign it. One player left without signing it the other day was disqualified. That's not an easy task after a round like that. I would imagine Sally might even be having trouble remembering her name. I was going to ask both you and Dave that. Is it kind of difficult to concentrate on uh, the arithmetic when, you know, the round is still in your mind and what you've done and so forth? Well, just uh, sometimes you get excited, especially with a chance to win a big tournament. You uh, can go over in your mind. You can ask other people to look at the card and, and in your own mind say, now here's what I made. Be sure and check that that it's right and just mm -hmm. read it off to them as you as you made it you know like part one and two and so forth. normally the other player with you keeps that score during the round right absolutely all right Correct. but it's your responsibility no matter what he or she puts down here is nancy lopez for the bogey back on 15. wiping a little moisture from the putter head this putt if she makes it will put her at plus 11 for the tournament and one over for the day and so it does <laughs> Nancy Lopez playing it out in the year 1978, but there should be so many years ahead for her at age 21. Here's Laura Baugh, another of the young stars of the tour, came out and uh, great things were expected of her. She, she has never quite lived up to that, hasn't won a tournament in several years on the tour. Been close a number of times, Jim, but yeah. just never uh, quite gotten over that first win deal. She says she's getting a little tired of just being the prettiest girl on the tour. She'd like yeah. to be the winner. She told me earlier this week that she had tried to readjust her thinking this particular week, that uh, she's tired of hearing people say that she hasn't won a tournament, and uh, she's finally facing up to the fact that she must win. And Laura's starting to play a little better. I expect it won't be much longer. Won't be much longer either until the leaders finally get to our cameras at the 13th hole. They have finished 10 now. If we get any kind of a picture from our mobile cameras, we'll also show you that. When we return, we return to the National Championship of American Women's Golf, the U.S. Women's Open at the Country Club of Indianapolis. This is Jim McKay out behind the 18th, and there is the way they stand. Joanne Carner tied with Hollis Stacy for the lead. Carner, who won this championship two years ago, Stacy, who won it last year. But please take note, if you're just joining us, of Sally Little, 
because she is still very much a contender, although her round for the day has been concluded. It was a record round of 65, two shots better than anyone has ever shot before in the USGA Women's Open Golf Championship. Nancy Lopez is not going to win the tournament this year. She is at plus 11, one over on today's round. Monday Night Baseball, tomorrow night on ABC, the Yankees against the Kansas City Royals out there in KC. The Red Sox against Minnesota, and that's at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, 6.30 in Los Angeles. They will be seeing in Los Angeles the New York-Kansas City game. Okay, that's the story on baseball, and the story on golf will continue for a good while. Once again, we'll be staying to the conclusion of this 1978 Women's Open Golf Championship. We're going out to the 16th now. We have Donna Horton White here. She's playing with Nancy Lopez. This long putt for a birdie. She's at plus 10. She's a stroke ahead of Nancy right now. Sally Little, who turned in the 65 today, tied for 10th in this championship last year. The young woman from South Africa. Donna Horton White is like Nancy Lopez, a rookie on the women's tour. Here we have the two top rookies on the women's tour playing together the last day by the coincidence of where they stood. Incidentally, Sally Little shot 33 going out and 32 coming back. To add to previous rounds of 75, 75, and 75. How about that? 75, 75, 75, and suddenly, bang, 65. Take 10 strokes off each of your previous scores. Some Shaking of the players... Shaking the moisture from the ball. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, Jim. Sure, Rodney. Some of the players were saying earlier today that they wouldn't be surprised to see one hot round, but they didn't think it would come from any of the leaders. And so far, that's exactly what happened. However, by shooting that one hot round, Sally Little has become one of the <laughs> Yes, she has. <laughs> it's always tougher when that score is already on the board, and uh, I'm sure it's a jolt to uh, the ones on the course uh, cause, because they know they have a long way to go, almost the entire back nine, and uh, Sally's sitting in there with a little six-over total of two nanny, which is very good. Nancy for the birdie on the par 3 16th hole. She birdied this one yesterday. So she may have the formula to get back to even par for the day. Ten over for the tournament. Nope. So it stays at one over for the day and eleven over for the tournament. So Nancy Lopez has only two holes left in this year's Women's Open. You can hear by the applause that the gallery is not of the size that we had not only hoped for but expected today, however, you cannot expect people to come out and slog through two thunderstorms, nor should they, probably, unless they have some place to go. A lot of paw off the fairway. And having this shot ahead of her on 15. It's going to depend whether those trees are in her way there, and of course what sort of lie will dictate the shot she can try to play. Laura is 13 over for the tournament, three over on today's round. No? Got to pass the tree, that was the first thing. Oh, and a good shot, just uh, in the tall rough, very hard to hold it, no matter how soft the greens are. Yep, she can get down with a pitch and a putt, she'll have her par. 18th fairway, Sandra Spusic hit a very bad first shot that got into a creek that normally doesn't come into play on the right side of the fairway. Now she's going in the bunker with her fourth shot. In other words, she had to go back to the tee. She hit again, put it down in the valley there, and now has put it in the bunker. So Sandra Spuzic, a former champion who is from Indianapolis, having a tough day. She started the day at plus 12, is now plus 17. So she's five over for the day, and she is going to go more over. There's Sandra Post, ball coming onto the green. Hitting very quickly after Sandy Spuzic. They're playing together. Well, sometimes when you make a double bogey, as uh, Sandra did it, uh, the 17th hole, you, you may play the last hole a little quicker. Yeah, that's right. Well, she's going to have a, an effort for a birdie to get one of them back, get a little more money. The first prize money, by the way, is $15,000, the richest USGA Women's Open ever, a $100,000 purse, and it goes up every year. Sometimes you wonder where it's going to stop. You see the money being put up and played for. Uh, I hope it keeps going. I oh, remember what a big thing it was. Was that only two or three years ago when Judy Rankin became the first woman ever to earn over $100,000 in a year? That's right. And three players did it that year. 
And uh, Nancy did it, I believe, in May of this year. <laughs> Made it the merry month of May. With <laughs> it was. Well, Sandra Post makes that last long climb up the 18th. On this golf course, by the way, which is an old golf course, it was built somewhere between 1900 and 1910. The club was founded in 1891, but it wasn't a golf course to begin. It was just a club out in the country. And they had some very interesting members of this club. James Whitcomb Riley, the noted Hoosier poet, Booth Tarkington, who wrote 17, and President Benjamin Harrison all belonged to the Country Club of Indianapolis. They had two clubhouses burned down on them, but they just came right back and built them up again. Really a fine club. Fine golf course. Looks as though you'd enjoy playing it all the time. Good chip there. Yep. I'm sorry to say she's going to have that for a double bogey. That's right. Six would put her seven over for the day. It would be a round of 78. It was a long 72 holes for Sandra, or still is, for Sandra po Spusich. Here's Sandra Post. She has this for a birdie. You got to remember the order of names out here. This is not the Indianapolis Country Club. This is the Country Club of Indiana, uh, Indianapolis. Whereas, it is not the University of Indiana. They get very upset about that. It's Indiana University. One of the few that does it that way. Sandra Post herself is from Canada. Jim, I think we have to thank all of the club members here at the Country Club of Indianapolis also for the fine work that they do in USGA events, all the marshals and scores. It certainly takes a lot of effort by the club membership itself. Without the volunteers, it's been said before, but it's so, so true, there would be no golf tour. There would be no major championships or anything else. Ooh, she gave that a poke. Ooh. Ooh. That was very quick there. Yanked it a little bit, maybe, Dave. Yeah. Leaving her that for a par. Sandra Post started 12 over. She's now 11 over. In other words, she's one under for the day. And to shoot a under par round of 70, she'll have to make this putt. Well, that's enough to make a person concentrate. Well, she certainly should, uh, even though the round was somewhat spoiled by that uh, double bogey at 17. It's no time to get careless. I mean, she's still going to have a pretty good finish if she'll just make this one. Out on the golf course, remember, the leaders are still Ty, Connor, and Stacy, each at four over par, leaving them two shots ahead of Sally Little, who is in relating her round, no doubt, to the members of the written press, the round of 65. Sandra Post then to the par. Okay, well done. A round of 70. After that first stroke, that's, that's a very good putt to get that one in, Rhonda. <laughs> that's right. And Sandra Spusich still needs another one for her double bogey six on this hole. Here's the 17th hole. Let's take a look at this one now. 393 yard par four. You pointed out you really want to be on the left side here. Especially where, especially where the flag is today. Here's Donna Horton White on that hole. Donna Horton White started at 10 over and she's even par on today's round but now she's off the putting green. Spuzic made that six up here on 18. Not what she wanted but she put a ball in the, in the creek. And you just know that Sandra's very disappointed today because she did want to play well in her hometown. That's right. Nancy Lopez now with her second shot on 17. At 79 yesterday was her undoing. She had been tied for the lead when the day began. She was playing along very consistently. She had had rounds of 71 and 73, then 79 yesterday. Okay. And here she is back just one over par today. So without that round yesterday, be very much in contention. You could hear someone say, come down. Well, it did. It always does, doesn't it? <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> it has to do that. 
Why don't we move over to the 15th green where Laura Ball, remember, hit a good second shot from the rough, but she put it into the rough over the green and now needs this for a bogey. So we're told, and uh, she'll move on. Laura Ball. And now let's get another report out on the course uh, from Bill Fleming on the Jane Blaylock group. Jim, it's a sad report in a way because I think uh, Jane may just have played herself out here at the 12th hole. She uh, hit the bunker on the right side on her second shot and then uh, did not get down in two from there. So she picks up the bogey. She now goes to plus eight. Okay, so the scoreboard shows. We'll return to the Country Club of Indianapolis in Indianapolis, Indiana for more of the 1978 Women's Open Golf Championship after this word from our local stations. Uh, this is Peter Ellis reporting to you from the women's, the American Women's Open Golf Championship here at the Country Club of Indianapolis. And some very good golf indeed being played here today. This is Hollis Stacy playing with Joanne Carner. And let's have a word from Bob Rosberg. Well, both players hit good drives at 12. Both put the ball on the green a long distance from the hole. Uh, Stacy putting first from about 30 feet. And we're talking about some good scores. Of course, Sally Little, 65 today. Six under par was really uh, brilliant stuff. She had uh, six birdies, no bogeys. And she had uh, birdies at the 6th, 8th, 10th, 12th, 15th, and 18th. So she was favoring the even numbers. And of course, Sandra Post with a 70. Pat Bradley with a 70. Marlene Haggy with 71. Amy Olcott, 71. Betsy King and Kathy McMullen also with 71. And almost the, the immortal Mickey Wright in with a 71 excellent score by one of the greats of the game of golf and this is Hollis Stacy tied for the lead with Joanne Carner at four over par and with a long long putt and there you can see how the greens are getting a little bit chewed up probably where the uh, the excellent uh, green staff here have been brushing away the water. It's just roughed the green up a bit. At the 17th now, Nancy Lopez putting across the green for birdie three. Missed a very holdable one at the last hole and uh, just overborrowed. You saw how that ball turned very late. Very big swing, but you just kept it out too much. Back to the 12th or Hollis Stacy. This for her par and in. In for her par four, remains four over. Sally Little in the clubhouse, of course, six over par. She's finished her round. So both these players, Karna and Stacy, have only two strokes, have only a two stroke lead over Sally, who's safely in. Khan, a very exciting player. You heard how uh, Jane Blaylock dropped a stroke here not too long ago. Donna Young not able to hold enough putts to creep up the leaderboard. Now uh, Joanne Khan are taking a lot of time. Can she get this for a birdie three? Very relaxed and cool lady. Nancy Lopez on the left, putting for her par. Joanne for birdie on the right. And Joanne's ball looking good if it runs. Uh, just stayed on the edge. Nancy Lopez gets her par. Joanne Carner just in for hers. Oh, and easy. Go God damn it. To the 13th. 13th, a good par three, 188 yards, tucked away in the corner, trees all round. And Karna and Stacy, who have told us they enjoy their golf together, battling away. There's the 18th model, 310 yards, drive downhill onto a sloping fairway, and then a pretty well a blind pitch short iron up to the elevated green the 
course playing 6,115 yards. That was Donna Horton White driving at the 18th. She's playing with Nancy Lopez and O. Oh, down in the forest, something stirred. Pushed it away down the right from the tee. Now Nancy Lopez with this very individualistic style sweeps the club well inside round the back of her legs in the backswing. Really gets it through though. That's a beautiful shot. And there you saw the ball just going perhaps six or seven feet after it landed. Now we'll go to the 13th and we'll find Jane Blaylock. Dropped a stroke at the 12th, but she's got, well, a long putt. Just on the front of this green, 13th, par 3. to turn but doesn't have enough pace two over par for today out in 36 par for the uh, first nine 35 she parred 10 and 11 dropped a stroke at the 12th playing with Donna Capone Young just getting it all lined up Donna out in 38 three over for today and that's the way it's been going for her most of this round and that score of Sally Little's beginning to look very good indeed Stacy and Karno will have to really play some good golf they're not to drop any strokes to par over these finishing holes he's very good finishing holes Donna Young, rather unhappy with the way things have gone for her because I'm sure she felt she was, well she was indeed in with a great, great chance. She's a fine competitor, very solid player. But four over for today and ten over for the championship. Now Jane Blaylock, having dropped a stroke the previous hole, has this for her par three at the 13th. Sir, she remains eight over par. Well, behind them, as they move to the 14th tee, the leaders, Joanne Carno and Hollis Stacey. Bob Rosberg's there. How's it all looking, Robert? Well, it's very, very still right now, and the pressure's really building up. This is a great par three here, and uh, it's a very important shot for Hollis. She's hit it, and it's going a little left, but it's going to be pretty good, though. It bounces in front of the green, gets down to the front edge. Uh, she didn't hit it real solidly. Um, kind of looked like she quit on it and left it a little short of the green. She's going to have a tough chip. Joanne has really hit the ball well, Peter. Uh, 
I think she's got a big edge when it started to rain because she can carry the ball so much further than most of these girls. Bob? Yes. Do you, do you know whether they know that Sally Little shot that 65? Oh, yes. They, they know that. You got the word? Yes. They've uh, looked at the board. Didn't believe it, but they looked at it. <laughs> This ball's way up near right at the flag. What a shot. Right over the flag. Uh, fine shot. Right over the flag of the 18th. And Nancy Lopez coming in up the finishing hole. High and right at the flag. And what a beautiful shot. Brings warm applause from the gallery. Fine shot from young Nancy Lopez. Let's have a look at Hollis Stacey's swing. Tee shot at the 13th. Nice position. Hands a little low, perhaps, for the true purist, but takes it away nicely. Good shoulder turn. A lot of leg action. Really whips the legs down. That looks a very good, strong position at the top. Head still, club head going way past the chin. The old adage, get the club head past the chin. On it goes. Swing looked good, but was either misjudgment or slightly mishit, and she's just short of the green. Here is the reception for Nancy Lopez. She isn't going to win it this year, but they still love her. She's at the 18th. She'll have a good birdie attempt here. It'd be nice if she could end up with that. Nancy, who is at 11 over for the tournament, remember, one over on today's round. And look at that, 135,464, and she'll make a few more sue here today very gracious lady even in defeat now donna capone young on the 14th tee in the process it appears of playing herself out of this championship she won't give up as has been said by others there's that uh fairway which has tremendous undulations to it even if you hit it in the perfect place Looks a little bit like St. Andrews, Dave. I uh, said that earlier. It uh, begins, uh, some of these fairways are, are a lot like that, where you just don't get a level lie, even though you've driven it down the middle. But after all, Jim, that's the way the game was when it was invented, so who says you're supposed <laughs> to have a level lie? That's right. Nancy Lopez could get back to even par for the day, 10 over for the tournament. If she does that, let's see, that would put her in a tie for one, two, three, four, for seventh place at the moment. That's good playing, and she that just shows you the pride she has uh, uh, with the kind of year she's had so far. In 79 yesterday, she could have just gone out today and gone through the motions, but uh, she stayed in there in this putt for 71. It's a 7-11 deal for her. It's tie for 7th if she makes it, and she didn't, so it'll be tie for 11th. And there's Hollis Stacy off the 13th green. Very important shot for her on this par 3 hole to get it close and she has not not at all but, all right nancy lopez finishing the round she'll be back maybe 15 or 20 times <laughs> a long time i hope round of 72 that's one over par on this golf course and plus 11 for the tournament i think that was a little kiss for her caddy roscoe jones there Roscoe has found himself <laughs> steady employment. Steady good green. employment. You know it. Now the co-leader, Joanne Carner, off the putting surface on 13. So again, if she wants to leave that flagstick in, she can. The problem here, Jim, may be that she uh, looks a little close to that second cut of grass there. Mm -hmm. And it could be that... Uh, those are always sort of in-between shots. You don't know, uh, or is she right in it, as a matter of it's fact. Like It'd be better off if it. she's in it. Can uh, you see, Bob Rosberg, is she up against it or in that longer grass? It looks to me like she's in the grass, but oh. she's going to put it anyway. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. As you say, Dave, that's a better place that's than, these, than, up, than up against it. Right. This for the two. It would put her in the lead because... Hollis Stacy playing with her has already taken two strokes and is a goodly distance from the hole. Good speed. Oh. Good putt. Good putt from there. 
All right, she'll have that for the three. Joanne Carner. Now we have Jane Blaylock on the 14th fairway, again with one of those strange lies you get on that hole. Connor made the putt for the three. So she remains at plus four. We'll be going back to the adventure of Hollis Stacy on her next shot. Four on the left, you heard that, so that's that's more trouble for Jane Blaylock. Jane at eight over for the tournament is still in fourth place, but her chance for winning is fading extremely fast, particularly with more sh shots like that coming up. There is the undulating fairway of 14, but now back to 13, and Hollis Stacy's putt for a par. As you can see, it's not an easy one. She must make this to stay tied for the lead. The whole championship could turn on this putt, in other words. Good attempt, but it'll be bogey four for Hollis Stacy. She'll drop to plus five for the tournament. She is one behind Joanne Carner, and now only one ahead of Sally Little. That's the way they go, one, two, three. And again, they still have five holes to play. Sally Little, sitting in the clubhouse now, is not out of it. There is a look at the way they stand. We'll be here until the finish this evening on ABC. Right now, a word from the USGA. Well, now the last group comes on to the 14th tee, Giant Carner and Hollis Stacy. Stacy having dropped a stroke at the short 13th hole. And this lady now, Joanne Carner, who's won so many tournaments and championships in her illustrious career, leads by one stroke. Stroke, five holes to go. Now you can see this very powerful swing. Good, solid grip. <laughs> Drive's going right, Peter. Well, it was a, an ugly swing. She lost balance, but it's only about a foot or so off the fairway, and it looks to be sitting up like a coconut. So. As Dave was saying earlier, she's hit uh, what was a very unpleasant stroke for her, but she's done it at the right hole, and it's not really caused her any distress, the distress at all. Now, Hollis Stacy, that's one behind, and the holder of this championship. It's a good-looking drive here, right down the left-hand side. Let's hear from Bill Fleming, who's got Sally Little. Well, we finally did after a long, lengthy session in the press room, and well-deserved, Sally. Just a marvelous 65. I can't imagine what your feelings are at this point. I'm elated uh, to shoot 65 in the U.S. Open. I'm, I'm really beside myself. Well, to shoot 65 is something, but to shoot it in the variable conditions that you shot it in, it had to be two different golf courses at two different segments of the day. It was. It started out, the greens were hard, and then... The first rain came, I mean, they got so slow, and finally the ball started hold, holding out here. Right. And how about the, the, uh, the, the rain delay itself, mentally? Well, um, it didn't bother me too much the first time, but the second time it did, because I was a few, it was like three or four under par, and I right. wanted to keep going. So I was a little bit antsy, but it, it lasted like 45 minutes, and we got to start again. Now, let me ask you this. Of the holes that uh, Joanne Carner has to play, uh, which would be the toughest ones? I mean, which would be the ones, for instance, that you had the most trouble with? Well, Joanne hits the ball a little bit further than I do, um, so the holes coming in are going to play a little bit easier for her than, the, than they did for me. Like, for instance, number 13, it's a par 3. Um, she probably hit about a 3-iron, and I had to hit wood there. And number 14, I had to hit driver two iron. She probably hit like five iron. So therefore, I think those holes, which are tough for me, are going to play a little bit easier for her. But you never know. 
I know that Sally Little is going to be a very anxious spectator here for the next uh, few minutes. I am. <laughs> okay, Sally. Con congratulations to you. Now let's go back to Peter Ellis. Well, for those of you hoping to see the Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew Mysteries, well, due to the rain and all the delays here, we're staying with the Women's Open Golf Championship here at the Country Club of Indianapolis, and you're watching there the leader of this championship at the moment, Joanne Carner. She's leading by just one wee stroke from Hollis Stacy, the holder of this event. This is Donna Capone Young at the 14th, putting for a birdie. 14th, uh, up on the green ahead of Karna and Stacy. Yeah. Yeah, she's got them. Yeah, I'm sure a great sigh of relief runs through Donna. She gets one putt in. She's not had too many birdies today. Started the day full of high hopes, but. Uh, all well, the rain delays have not done her any good. That's a model of the 14th hole, 493 yards. A very undulating fairway. And then uphill to the green. That's a view looking back down from behind the green. And we are going to find Holly Stacy and Joanne Carner. Carner looked very disappointed with her tee shot. She lost her balance and uh, fell about and had a rather wry smile on her face when she watched the ball disappearing from the tee, but in fact she's not found um, too bad a spot. The ball looks to be settled down a little bit in this rough, which of course is very wet now, and uh, well, we'll follow it through with Bob Rosberg. This looks to be a three iron, Peter. She drove very short, as you said. She didn't get it up in the air very good, but it's going to hit short of the green and may run on. Well, it stopped short. Uh, she's going to have a very hard time making four. Well, Hollis has hit a beautiful drive, but she didn't catch the best of lies, Peter. She caught one of those uphill lies, and she's got a long ways to go, so she's going to have to probably go with a two iron. A difficult shot from an uphill lie. You can get some idea of the slope. She got through it and hit it right at the flag. This is some shot. <laughs> Oh, that's a majestic stroke. Just rolls away about 12 or 14 feet. That's a brilliant stroke from young Holly Stacy, who's not giving up her title easily over these closing holes. We'll be back to see the finish in a moment or two. And that's how they stand over these final holes. Joanne Carner, Holly Stacy. And let's have a word from Bob Rosberg. One of the main, I think one of the main things, Peter, right now is the ability of the girls to concentrate. They have been out here an awful long time. They were supposed to start today's round at 1.15, uh, this last group, and they weren't able to start till 2 o'clock, and it's getting very late now. Very, very difficult to stay out this long and keep your concentration. I think that when they started, or at least when they, they made a few birdies at the start of the round, they thought it was more or less going to be a match between themselves. But with Sally Little coming into the picture, it's kind of turned things around. Well, it certainly has after that uh, marvelous score of 65 by Sally Little. Uh, Karner with an awkward little chip using a very lofted club, you can see. Well, I don't know what you thought, Dave Ma, but that uh, would appear to have been a strange club to play at that time. She obviously tried to loft it up when perhaps one lower to the ground might have suited better. Uh, she has a little bit better nerves than I do, Peter. She used a lofted club then. See Dave Thomas trying to play that shot? <laughs> Your friend? That's right, yeah. Well, he might have hit it four times from there. <laughs> so here's a chance now for Hollis Stacy to... Uh, well, all sorts of permutations could happen, and that's one of the wondrous things about this game of golf, because uh, Joanne, of course, can still hold her putt. Hollis can go for this and maybe miss a little one coming back again. The permutations are endless and endless, but it still uh, looks as if it's Joanne Carner to putt first, and that's not a very good position to be in. She's now playing four. Hollis Stacy, the defending champion, has only had two strokes after that majestic second shot of hers. 
And Joanne is summoning up all the concentration she can muster on this one. She's just leading by one stroke, but she's not played this hole very well at all. Poor tee shot into the rough. Didn't find the best of lives, but it was a long iron shot up the hill, short of the green, and then, well, whether she, well, she obviously thought the shot was a high little pitch, and it's very easy to say otherwise afterwards, but uh, she's got this for her par four. Very important putt, I feel, indeed, for her. So that's a five on this 393-yard par four. Oh, she's just settling herself down. She's only 12, 13 inches past the hole, but you'll notice how they concentrate on every shot. Every one of these costs just as much as a full-blooded drive. Five for Connor. manages a little wispy smile but she knows that might be very expensive now Hollis Stacy oh, that's the putt you see there for a birdie three Pops it in, she'll go into the lead, and there will have been a swing of two strokes on this 14th hole. Rhonda, you can almost see the strain beginning to tell on the faces. This young face now showing a little bit of strain. Yes, Hollis has been a little bit nervous all week. It's hard to tell, but she laughs a little too quickly, and I understand she's not sleeping well. She wants us very badly, Peter. And she go, go. gets it. Oh. What a marvelous putt the hole at a moment like that. Just four holes to play. She birdies, Joanne Carner bogeys, and suddenly a brisk walk to the next tee. Laura Bohr holding out. Smiling, getting a nice round of applause. Laura Bohr, one of the gallery favourites of women's golf. 76 today and 15 over for the championship. She goes and checks her score, and that's how they stand. Stacy now, one in the lead. We're obliged to leave you for a moment or two, but we will be back. Well, we're back with the Women's Open Golf Championship, and for those of you who are hoping to see the Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew, well, we're sorry that you're missing that, but this is a, it's an ill wind, as they say, and I'm sure all the golfers, particularly those interested in women's golf, are delighted that we're able to stay here till the conclusion of this fine championship. Donna Capone Young, putting 15th, and ooh, hard and left. Still a little bit of work to do. And she's got this now to go 11 over par. The last group coming up behind this pairing. Donna Young and Jane Blaylock playing this hole and on her getting in eventually. She's not had the happiest of days on the greens. And there's Jane Blaylock, who many fancied to win this event, putting for her par. Already in the clubhouse, for those of you just tuning in, Sally Little with a splendid round of 65 today. Three 75s and then a 65. <laughs> Marvellous score. We're doing Donna Young an injustice by saying she was 11 over. In fact, she's 10 over par. This is Blaylock 
now for her par to remain nine over. She does it. So really now with Sally Little safely in the clubhouse, it just remains to see whose concentration and nerve remains the strongest over these closing holes on this very fine golf course indeed here in Indianapolis. As Hollis Stacy, holder of this championship, the leader by one stroke. She's playing up to this green. It's only 315 yards, this hole. All doesn't seem to be lying too badly, Bob. It's on the down slope, Peter, and she's left it way short. She almost shanked it. In fact, I think she did shank it. That ball is in the right-hand rough, way to the right of the green. She was a little worried about being able to drop it over the bunker and keep it on the green because the wind has come up and is behind her, and she half shanked that ball. Carner's hit a tremendous drive right in front of the green. She has a shot of about 50 yards, 55 yards. Now you can see how far down the shaft she is gripping this club. It breaks quickly. Beautiful shot's going to be a little long, though. Carries about 30 feet by. Well, a fine shot from Carner, but uh, a long way past. Earlier, our lovely Rhonda Glenn had a chance to speak to the defending champion, Hollis Stacy. Here she is. Let's hear what Hollis had to say. Did it make any change, changes in your life, winning the Open, uh, outside of giving you ability to win other golf tournaments and more confidence? No, it didn't change my life. I, uh, I know that I'm wanted more, and I have accepted that, but I still consider myself pretty much the same person, and those that know me treat me the same. They still give me a hard time. And, uh, uh, and I, I don't really want it to change. I, I'm trying to, to be just myself, and I think it's pretty difficult on yourself when you put yourself above people and, and above uh, certain things. So I try to maintain, or I have tried to maintain a, a certain level and just try to be just tallest. Well, you saw whilst uh, the voice and face of Hollis Stacy was telling you how she'd coped with a year of being the champion. You saw that little chip and run. That looked a bit thin, Bob. Did it? Was it a toppy one over the green, or what happened there? Yes, yeah, she did half top the ball. Uh, that's two in a row that she has not hit very well, uh, Peter. And uh, I tell you, as the play goes on, that score of Sally Little sitting in the clubhouse at six over par looks better and better. Well, there's some statistics on this hole. 30 birdies, 124 pars, 41 bogeys, and three double bogeys on this hole, which only measures 315 yards. Now Hollis needs to have a few deep breaths. Yes, Walker, and there's Sandy Tatum, president of the USGA, who is um, with this final match out on the course. There's quite a bit of... Um, water about the place, depending on who's, whose shot it was, I think. And Sandy has decreed that it is Joanne Carner, even though Hollis is off the putting surface. Rhonda, it really is getting down to a battle of, uh, of nerves now, isn't it? And uh, as Bob Rosberg said, with Sally Little in the clubhouse, uh, Relaxing, we hope, but I'm sure nibbling her fingernails, it really is a very tense situation. I think Sally's probably nibbling more than she is relaxing, Peter. And uh, it, it's getting down to almost uh, match play with these two if they can just hold on to no more than five over par. Well, that, of course, might be a problem. They're so busy watching each other, they can uh, perhaps forget that Sally's in there with uh, a very good score after that magical round of 65 today and Joanne with a well the putt you see down the hill she's 
only played two strokes though and Hollis Stacy the leader has played three and she's not on the green she's given that a good run what a good try and well 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 they could so easily go in but sometimes they don't and that one didn't but it looks uh, certain for is she going to tap it in looks as if she is uh, that's what's called getting your blow in first she pops this in for her par four and then over to you Hollis to see what you can do Four. So Joanne Carner remains at five over par with 15 holes played. Just one ahead of Sally Little, who is in the clubhouse. And now Hollis Stacy, the defending champion, has an awkward little chip just at the back of the green. But well, we've seen a few of these hold in our time. What a moment it would be for her to pop this one in. She's she had a <coughs> splendid putt on the previous hole. Now it looks to be lying all right. So much depends on the pace of the green after the two rainstorms which delayed play. Hands forward, body still just pushes it forward. And that's a good one. Well, we nearly saw it disappear. What a good little chip and run. She's left with about a 30-inch putt. But it's for a one-over par. Five. And if she gets this, they will be level again. With just three holes to play. And just one stroke ahead of Sally Little. Settling down, getting the feel of it. This hole, only 315 yards, as we've said. And Hollis struggling for her bogey. Yes, well done. Well hold, just three holes to play while they go on to the 16th tee. We'll leave you for these messages. We're back at the U.S. Women's Open. Joanne Conner has just hit her tee shot on the par 3 16th hole and has left it short. This is the one that you were not with us earlier that is guarded by a huge tree on the right side of the green. You must avoid that, but she's just left it short. We're televising the final round of the U.S. Women's Open Golf Championship from the Country Club of Indianapolis. This is Jim McKay at the 18th hole with Dave Marr and Rhonda Glenn. The reason we're still here is because we had two delays uh, caused both times by thunderstorms in the area here and of course you clear a golf course at the first sign of lightning So we're going to stay with it until this championship is concluded at the moment It's a tie for the lead between this woman Hollis Stacy the defending champion and Joanne Connor playing with her whom you just saw hit now This is the tee shot of Hollis Stacy both of them just one stroke ahead of Sally Little who shot a 65 today and had, has had her round concluded for some time Right. Yeah, but not too bad. But it got by the tree. That's the main thing. Yeah. But you got a big break, Dave. That ball actually went under the tree. And if it catches it at all and knocks it down, she's really going to have a tough shot left. I'd like to know what kind of shot Joanne will have left there. It looks like she's got a hard pitch there. Well, it doesn't look like it's sitting particularly good. And she's got to stop it real quick after she pitches it up onto the bank. Uh, I watched this hole yesterday, and this that shot was almost impossible. But... With the rain, she may have a little a better chance of getting it close. Okay, well, here is Joanne Connor walking up to the 16th green earlier today. Rhonda had a chance to talk to her about a few things. Here's what Joanne had to say. What does winning the U.S. Open mean to you? Well, to me, it's the most prestigious uh, 
the thing I love about the Open is it's shot making. It's not a putting contest as so many of our tour events are. And you just, you can't drive it that straight, so you have to be able to play out of the rough and through the trees and over the trees. And it's really fun for me to play the Open. All right, we're back on the 18th, and this is Carol Simple, the amateur who has played a fine tournament here. Started the day at eight over and was a contender, but she's five over in today's round, plus 13 for the tournament. Former U.S. and British amateur champion who has played only two tournaments in about a year and a half, so it's a remarkable performance. And I believe this will make her the low amateur in the open, won't it, Jim? Playing with her is Joanne Washam. Washam started the day at nine over, is now 11 over. She's had a good tournament. Two over on today's round. Now, Joanne Carner playing up with a good chip shot, but a short chip shot, it looks like, on I'm, the 16th hole. I'm surprised. It must just be because of the wet uh, weather that she was able to stop that. I thought she'd really have a difficult time. Weariness beginning to show a little bit on the faces of both of these women, as Rusberg indicated a little while ago. They've been out there a long, long time. First, they had to wait for their starting time. They had not started when the first rain delay came along. Had to wait an hour and 34 minutes. Then we had another rain delay of about 45 minutes. And uh, still playing it out hours and hours after they're supposed to start. Has to tell on anybody. However, they've both been out there the same length of time. That's... Uh Right, but uh, it's not so much the, the physical, it's the mental strain, Jim, of, of trying to concentrate, trying to keep your wits about you. Calm down, don't worry. Sally Little's already finished. I'm ahead of her. Try to make some pars and get in with five over. You know the, uh, well, here's Carol Simple putting out, completing her fine tournament here. Carol Simple of Swickley, PA, daughter of a former president of the U uh, U.S. Golf Association, Bud Simple. So she's finished, but now Hollis Stacy. For the birdie. Good run. The lead has changed hands between these two five times during this round today. That doesn't count when they're dropping back into a tie. The lead has actually changed five times. And we could see the sixth time on this hole before it's done. There you see it. Stacy and Connor, Sally Little. Although she's sitting still, creeping up. <laughs> and 17's a hard hole to par. Eight, and 18 is no cinch, but nope. uh, 17, good golf hole. Should there be a playoff, it will be at 18 holes tomorrow, and we'll be here. OK, par three for Hollis Stacy. Now it'll be over to you, Joanne gunderson Carner five-time U.S. Amateur Champion, two-time U.S. Women's Open Champion, long ago, USGA Junior Champion. Needing this for the par three. Giving it a good study, too. How do you see it from here, Dave? Well, there shouldn't be too much break here, Jim. When it rains, it seems to take away a lot of the break. Just keep it inside the hole and try to hit it solid. Oh, she did not hit it. Bogey four. It drops her to plus six in a tie with little one shot behind Stacy. We'll return to the Country Club of Indianapolis for more of the championship after this word from our local stations. Well, look who won a golf tournament today. Jack Nicklaus. Just off the British Open Championship, he went to Philadelphia. This was a so-called designated tournament where all the men had to play. Jack made no secret of the fact that he didn't want to be there. But as long as he was there, I guess he figured I might as well win it. Right. 14 under par, beating Dr. Gil Morgan by a shot. Isn't that great? I wonder what happened to Litsky. He was a stroke ahead beginning the round. He fell out of there. I don't know. Maybe we'll try to find out. 17th tee now. Hollis Stacy, the leader in the Women's Open Championship. On the 393-yard par four, she has hit a lovely tee shot. It's up to her now to try to maintain that one-stroke lead and not drop back into a tie now with Joanne Carner and Sally Little. She of the 65 record round today. 
Joanne Carner, who won the USGA junior title 22 years ago, now battling for the U.S. Women's Open. And this ball's way to the right. Whoops, problem, Bob, eh? Well, oh, yeah. it's not a real problem, Jim. It, it's far enough that it missed the bunker, but uh, it's in the rough. And any time you put it in any kind of open rough, as we've said time after time, it's very difficult to get the ball close to the hole. Okay, well, we're looking right now at a shot of where her ball is and where it must go. It must reach this green. That's uh, somebody in a group ahead, knocking one up on the green right now. Let's take a look at this swing, Dave. Well, if we could freeze this at impact, Jim, this is a problem I talked to Joanne about just when she was starting the round. She brought it up, as a matter of fact, that the one thing she has tried to get out of, she makes, now this is all very good up to when she gets the ball and she has not moved her weight enough over to her left side. There's too much weight back on her right foot. You'll see her now as mm -hmm. she goes through the ball. Watch the weight go back on the right foot. And at this time, it leaves the face of the club open, and she's pushed it out to the right. She may have hit it solid, but she hasn't really released the club and got it back as square as it should have been. See, there's too much strain back there on her right foot here. Everything should be over on the left. Buddy. Right, Mo more than, than she has it. Okay, so that's why Joanne Connor did not hit her best shot off the 17th tee. Monday Night Baseball tomorrow night. Yankees are at Kansas City, Boston Red Sox at Minnesota Twins. Starting at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, 6.30 in Los Angeles. And there's also a Cubs-Los Angeles game in other areas. Check your local listings to see which ball game you'll be getting. Donna Capone Young for a par. She's the one you saw just pitch up onto this green on the 17th hole. She is at 10 over for the tournament. She was a contender when the day began. She's a two-time winner of this championship. Four over now on today's <laughs> round. With one hole left to play. Playing with her, Jane Blaylock, who started the day at six over and is now nine over. And in a tie for fourth place with Peggy Conley and Pam Higgins and Kathy Martin. Nancy Lopez, if you have just joined us and are wondering, finished at plus 11 for the tournament, one over on today's round. In a tie for 11th place at the moment. Okay, Jane Blaylock will move on to 18. She's never won this championship although she's won so many tournaments on the women's golf tour. Doesn't look too downhearted about the whole thing. Uh, nice little par she made there. So. Yep. All right, now back to the 17th, and Joanne Carner in the rough, the leader, Hollis Stacy on the fairway. It's advantage Stacy at the moment. Rossi, what sort of shot does she have? Well, David, she's put it in a perfect place. Uh, she drove it on one of the few level spots on this fairway. The only thing she has to guard against is letting it go to the right. Uh, everything slopes to the right here, but there's a lot of green to the left, and it would seem to me that she would try and put the ball on the left-hand side of the green, try and two-putt and, and take her chances that five, uh, that five over will win the tournament. Dave, you talked about mental strain, and she walked up to that shot, then walked away. The concentration gets tougher and tougher, I should have said. Well, I, th I think, no, a good move there. She probably really hadn't decided exactly what she was going to do. Uh, Rossi's got the right idea. Shoot at the middle of the green and just let the contour take it to the right. She hit it right at the flag. I don't know if it's up. Oh, yes, it, it is. What yeah, a, a shot. great shot. Current holder of the championship trying to hold onto it for another year. Last person to do that was Donna Capone Young to win it twice in a row. Oh, there you see Hollis's ball on the green. Carner now with this shot. Very difficult, Jim, to get the right club with the rough this wet. Mm -hmm. Looks like a pretty clean lie, though, Bob, for, for rough, I mean. Well, yes, it is a good lie, David. And then she's got enough green to work with. Uh, she can put it in there if she gets the right club. How's it look? Not a little hot. It looks like it may be long. That's not very long. Not too bad. Beautiful <laughs> shot. A little longer than marvelous, Bob. <laughs> a great shot by Joanne Connor. It isn't over yet. Stay with us for the U.S. Women's Open. We've almost reached the finish, or have we, of the 1978 U.S. Women's Open. I say have we because more and more there's the possibility of a tie here, and that would mean a playoff at 18 holes tomorrow. If so, airtime would be 3.30 to 4.30 in Indianapolis time. That, of course, would be 4.30 to 5.30 in the east. 
There you see the standing of some of the other players. Just about everybody has finished up except the last two groups. Low amateur in the tournament has been determined. It was Carol Semple with that total of plus 13, 297. Second low amateur was Julie Simpson of 299. Congratulations to both of them. The leader, Hollis Stacy, hit a very good tee shot here. She had a good second shot, and yet she finds herself outside and putting first, knowing that Joanne Carter has a very make -up, make -up birdie putt coming up in a minute. Jim, you'll notice that Hollis keeps moving all the time in between shots. She's almost never still, and she told me that that's one way she releases energy, and also she feels that it helps her keep her rhythm flowing. She really does prowl, doesn't she? She Notice does, that, yes. Yeah. Having a look. Putt and the reaction. Mm. Good putt, Jim. Just didn't play enough break. That'll be the four then, a par on the 17th hole to keep her at plus five for the tournament, one over on today's round. <laughs> well, we have avoided the term critical or crucial shot, but certainly that putt coming up will be one. Here's Donna Capone Young on 18 with her second shot on the par four. She's at plus 10 for the tournament now, four over on today's round. To the right. Oh, and short. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Been a long, long way around for Donna today. As she plays with Jane Blaylock, they can commiserate with each other a bit. Both had great hope of winning the tournament. Now, Joanne Carner. Very good look at the distance of that putt. Looks like about 12 feet from the way she was pacing it off, would you mm -hmm. say, Dave? Going a little downhill, Jim, so mm -hmm. getting it to the hole should not be so much of a problem. She left that putt at the last hole short. Close. Uh, that one was very nearly a must for her, but there's one more chance, the 18th hole. You hate to let those go by, though, because Whoa. you don't know if you can get it that close the last hole. Of course, this is no cinch either. She's made it, though. <clears throat> Par four for Joanne Corner, keeping her at plus six in a tie with Sally Little, who shot 65 today for second place. Jane Blaylock hit this shot a moment ago on 18, her second shot. Blaylock, three over for the day, nine over for the tournament. Come in. Somebody said come in, and it did, at least to that point. Leaving her that for her birdie putt. Jane Blaylock of New Hampshire. Walking up yet another 18th fairway. Now, here is Donna Young in the bunker. Third shot on 18. Ah, yes. All right. Now, let's move back through that valley, up the hill again on the other side to the T, where Hollis Stacy has hit that shot down into the valley and down into the rough. Didn't look too good, of shot? What kind of shot was yeah. that? Well, I tell you, I couldn't even see the ball. It, it never even got up, and it's short of the road down in the rough. She uh, didn't hit that, what, 160 yards? Well, it looks like shorter than that. She hit it about 130. She's gonna have 180 or 90 Lord. yards left. Our spotter says she hit an iron and just plain hit it fat. Oh, well, well, that that's everybody up. stick around. Here's Joanne Connor now. She sees the door of opportunity swing open once again. Ah. And yeah, way right. Go. Way right. 
Ooh. Oh, that's terrible. And that ball is way out, almost in the creek to the right. I, uh, I don't, these balls are so far apart, it's going to take me a little while to get there. Well, everything hangs in the balance. It could go one way or the other. On the final round, we'll be right back. Back at the final hole of the U.S. Women's Open with the leaders staggering their way to the clubhouse. We have Donna Capone Young here putting on the 18th green, and let's watch that. As Great she makes it a beautiful, scrambling par four. For Donna Young, a round of 75 today, a tournament total of plus 10. And that leaves it all up to the final two. Joe Ann Connor and Hollis Stacy both hit dreadful tee shots on this final hole. Stacy hit one that didn't go. We're looking at Jane Blaylock. This is on videotape from a minute ago. Birdie attempt. But uh, Stacy hit an iron fat off the tee and trying to play safe. That so often seems to happen, Dave. And is way, way short of the green. Kind of a long shot from the rough. And then Joe Ann Connor with a great opportunity pushed it way out to the right. We can't even see it from here. We've seen both of those shots, though, as you see Jane Blaylock finish up. Jane Blaylock today shot around a three over par 74, finishes at plus nine for the tournament in a tie for fourth place. So many possibilities. We could still have a winner here. We could have a two way playoff. We could have a three way playoff. Conceivably, we could even see Sally Little win the tournament. Well, there's the view she has, Jim. And, and, and Rossi, did you get a chance to look at her line? What sort of lie does she have down there? She's got a pretty good lie, David, but I'd be very surprised if she's able to get the ball up enough and get hit it far enough to put it on the green. I think it's going to have to come up short. She said as though she hit have fat to go. left. It's going to get left and short. Oh. She, I tell you, it's not in a bad place, though, David. Uh, the ball is sitting, I can see it from down here in the fairway, so it's got to be sitting pretty good. She's going to have a straight uphill pitch. Joanne has no shot at all. She's got to play a low fade, and uh, with the grass as wet as it is, she has no chance of running the ball up. And if it does happen to take a bounce and luckily jump over the, the bunker, it's going to go too far. But she has no shot at all. So it, it looks like the only chance of avoiding a playoff here is for this woman, for the defending champion, Hollis Stacy, to get up and down in two strokes from off the green. Her problem there may have been that she, I think she changed her strategy a bit on this hole, Jim. Normally, uh, she's been hitting her driver off the tee on most of the holes, and it uh, looks like she started to play conservative. And Hollis said normally that does not affect her well. She'll have a problem if she gets too conservative. So being one shot in the lead may have done it to her. All right, here's Joanne Connor. A beautiful look at this shot from our handheld camera. Right behind her, you can see the problem that she has. And uh, as Bob Rosberg in indicated, I can see no way she can get to the green. No, and the trap is there too. Uh, she should happen to even hit it hard enough to get over the trap. You've got, uh, there's not enough green to keep the ball on it. Very little chance here. Good effort. Uh, short of the trap. The, just short in the, the tall bunker. grass to stop way short of the bunker, uh, David. Okay, so Connor still in trouble on the final hole. We'll be back after this word from our local station. We're back again at the U.S. Women's Open. Again, if you're expecting to see the regular nighttime programming on ABC, we're here because of two rain delays, finishing up the national championship of women's golf. And it's been a long, hard struggle. And so now only two players are on the course, Joanne Connor and Hollis Stacy. Stacy, trying to retain her championship, must get up on the green and down on the hole in two strokes. Connor here in order to have any hope for a playoff, must get on the green and down in two strokes. Two players of the highest caliber, and this means so much to Hollis. She said she would trade 20 LPGA Tour victories for this particular championship. For Joanne, if she can win it, she'll tie Bobby Jones' record. Joanne has had 20 <laughs> PGA Tour victories, LPGA, and more. More. Third shot on the par four hole now. Good shot. Oh, beautiful shot. So she's still fighting. Look at <laughs> She looks like she's loving it, by the way. She huh? loves trouble shots. Well, I think <laughs> she likes the, the competition too, Rhonda. She she likes uh, as Nicholas said, not too 
distant past that this is really what it's all about is the competition. That's right. And she, the great championships of which this is one. Does this remind you any of the Nicholas Watson battles that we saw last year? Well, we yeah, we have the uh, King of the Hill there, Joanne, and the youngster. I don't know why Hollis doesn't win more. As well as she swings at a golf ball, seems like she'd be winning a lot of tournaments. So she, she's had a good year. I mean, she's won over $50,000, but uh, gee, she's a very impressive player. Okay, this is it. She has to get up and down to win the U.S. Open for the second straight year. She's up, but it's good. Oh, it's it's going to be one shot. of those <laughs> very, very difficult putts. And we'll be back to see it in a minute. That's the situation. We could have a three-way tie. We could have a two-way tie. We could have a winner still for the U.S. Women's Open. And the last two players are on the green. Joanne Carner here must make this putt to have hope of going into a three-way playoff tomorrow with Hollis Stacy and Sally Little. Sally Little, if by any chance you just joined us, shot 65 today, a new record for this championship to move into her position. Hollis Stacy here is the leader at the moment. There. She hey. ah. Great putt. Joanne Carner with a, a mighty heart. effort. A lot of heart. A lot of heart for that lady. What a par that was for this 39-year-old golfer. The most appealing lady, you saw her with that big grin as she fought her way up the 18th hole, out of the rug, short of the bunker, onto the green, and into the hole. And now it's all up to Hollis Stacy. There will be a playoff unless, unless Hollis Stacy can make a five-foot putt, five feet from her second consecutive U.S. Women's Open Championship. What a five. If she makes it, we'll be leaving here quickly. And if she makes it, it's all over. If she misses it, three-way playoff. And we'll be back tomorrow. She made it. She made it. from Savannah, one of ten children of Tilly Stacy, a remarkable woman, her mother, who's been with her every step of the way. Hollis Stacy has done it again, and congratulations to her. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United built the largest airline in the free world around you. Once again, the winner of the 1978 Women's Open Golf Championship is Hollis Stacy. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports recognized around the world as the leader in sports television.